How is rising interest rates going to affect your buying power? Stay tuned. the Skylands real estate team here and we're here to answer your burning questions for first-time home buyers or even second-time home buyers um, the real estate market is changing constantly as well as the mortgage rates and you might have been hearing a lot in the news recently about how rates are going to be going up soon so we are here with Mickey from guaranteed rate it's one of our partner companies with Cobalt Banker and they do an awesome job with mortgages so um, when you're working with us to find a home, you can also work with Mickey, part of our team, to get everything organized for you. So Mickey, what's going on with real estate these days with the rates? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm happy to be here and to talk about interest rates and what the market's doing and what I've seen over the last couple months. Uh, I've been in the industry 20 years. I've kind of seen every market. Um, and this one's definitely been a little bit different. Uh, the biggest change I've seen, the biggest mindset shift that I've seen is the idea of what a buyer could pay now versus what they would have paid a couple months ago versus what they could potentially pay in the next few months. Uh, the change has been dramatic. I mean, we've seen rates as low as two and a half percent, right? Huge trigger. What did that lead to? Lack of inventory, right? Everyone wanted to get that house and willing to pay anything they could to get that property. Now it's kind of the same thing, but the change has been the rates. It hasn't been so much of a deterrent yet, but we could definitely see that happening. Uh, just to give you a general idea, you know, if we were looking back in November of 2021, rates were as low as 2.75%. Average home loan amount is around 400,000. It's around 1,600 bucks a month, right? Affordable, right? Uh, and now around February 1st, rates are as high as three and a half percent. Still ridiculously low. I mean, historically low. Uh, what does that mean for somebody's monthly payments? How much more is that going to cost them per month? That's a great question. That's going to cost them about $160 more a month. It's still relatively affordable. It's right. not going to be a huge deterrent. You're going to see the real shift when it becomes around 4%. That's when the payment changes. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to be close to $300 more a month. Right. Now, that's a staggering number, right? That's going to drive buyers to step away, right? Sellers who decided to wait and not list at the, in my opinion right now is the peak time, uh, that decided not to list are gonna see the inventory start to grow. And what happens when inventory grows? Sales prices start to go down. Right. Right? Stabilize. Stabilize. You might wanna call that a buyer's market. It's not a buyer's market because now the interest rates are higher. So they're gonna be more picky. They're gonna step away. They're gonna wait and wait and wait for those property values to drop. To drop. So in my opinion right now for buyers and sellers, it is peak. It is peak for them to find a home. It's, sell, it's peak for sellers to list their home. The most staggering number that you're gonna hear, uh, if you would have bought a home in November, right? Versus if the interest rates went up to 4%, over the life of that loan, you would have paid $100,000 more in interest. That's a lot of money, right? So just think about that. Mickey, we have a lot of buyers coming to us with pre-approvals from other companies. Why should they talk to you? That's another great question. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having a second opinion, right? Yeah, that loan officer might have done their due diligence, but are you really getting the best program? You know, did they did they say, hey, someone came in with an FHA, but did they do enough due diligence to say they're qualified for a conventional loan as well? Right? There's a lot of different reasons to get a second opinion, and it's not only because whether or not they're approved, right? It's could be the interest rate. Use it to your advantage. You're shopping around. A lender is not gonna say, no, sorry, I'm not gonna help you. Right. We're gonna do whatever we can to get that business, right? And if it helps you get a lower interest rate, you're just doing yourself, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice for not doing it. Applying for a mortgage or a pre-approval with another agency, how does that affect your credit score? Yeah, so uh, creditors allow you to shop around. They give mm -hmm. you about a 45 day window. As long as you're shopping within the same pool of credit. If you decide to, we always advise against it, uh, apply for a mortgage, buy a car, get a cell phone, open up credit cards, all at the same time, that's four different pools of credit. That's four different hits, oh, right? Okay. When, if, you're just, if you're looking for a house, that's the only thing that you should be doing. You'll receive that initial hit, a couple points, you'll get it back within a few days, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But as long as you're shopping around within that 45 days, there's not gonna be any additional hits. 
So what would be some other things that um, people need to consider when they're shopping for a mortgage? That's a great question. So if you started looking for a home, say back in June of 2021, you know, your life changes, rates have changed, right? So your pre-approval might not mean as much as it did then as it would now. Your buying power has decreased. Um, along with that, you know, you might have received a raise or changed jobs. Those are all things that you want to communicate to whoever it is that's helping you with your lending. You don't want to just sit on a pre-approval that's been out there for six or seven months because it might say it's still valid, but a lot of things have changed. So you want to keep that in mind. Buying power is important. Um, savings, you know, it's, it, for, before I get into savings, credit, right? Credit is, I feel, has become more important than it's been in the past. Whereas we always started with, hey, show us what you, how much money you make, right? Show us your W-2, show mm -hmm. us your pay subs, we wanna get that idea. But credit's been a driving factor, especially around the holidays. You tend to spend a lot more money on your credit cards during the holiday and say, okay, when I, you know, sometime next year, I'll try to pay down that debt. And then it's a vicious cycle that you do it all over again. So I think it's important that you pay attention to your credit. Um, you wanna try to minimize your debts. Uh, if you have credit cards, try to keep them below 30%. Um, the more, believe it or not, the more credit cards you have, the better. Uh, credit account, credit cards account for 30% of your total credit score. It's a large amount. So if you have only one credit card, that's 30% of your score. You miss that payment, it's going to dramatically affect your credit card or your credit score. Uh, if you have two credit cards, now it's 15%. It's not so bad. Three, 10%. So you're extending your credit, you're increasing your liability, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're able to manage your credit score a lot better because you don't have to worry about that one bad thing possibly happening. Um, obviously, mortgage debt, we're gonna pay attention to that if you're looking to sell, to buy. Um, you wanna try to avoid contingencies in a bidding war. Um, chances are, if you have two matching offers, but one has to sell something, you guys could speak for, you know from experience that you're likely gonna take the offer without the contingency. Right. But we have to take everything into consideration. Um, that's my job, that's the job of any loan, uh, loan officer, to make sure that we've done enough due diligence, to make sure that when your buyers are out there looking for homes, that they've done enough to make sure that there's not gonna be anything to get in the way of that. Yeah, well, it's very important, everybody, that you take all of this information to heart, not to get panicked or scared. We definitely have the information to steer you through and to give you all the good advice to make sure that you're making a wise decision. But just know that things are going to be changing. And, you know, if you're budgeting your monthly expenses and you're really close and down to the wire, you really don't want to wait much longer because it will definitely affect what you're able to purchase. And um, again, sellers, you don't want the market to change and make things worse for you. And that'll be, you know, less buyers out there. And that means less offers on your home, less favorable terms, and less money in your pocket at the end of the day. So Mickey, if people have mortgage questions, what's the best way that they can reach you? Well, there's, there's so many different ways now, but uh, the best ways in my opinion, you can reach me by phone, email, or by, visit my website. Okay, and we're gonna have that information for you. And oh, as always, you can go to our website, skylandsrealestate.com. We will have links and uh, you can always give us a call too.